I mean, the man's not wrong. Under different circumstances, Sigvald might have actually enjoyed it. But it's a brave new world. One in which the scion of Slaanesh hopes does not end with his cold, lifeless corpse getting golden showered by Throg. Some Commanders returns to the channel with El Clasico, the OG thematics. Order versus Chaos. Skaven and the Warriors of the Far North against a grand alliance of dwarfs, humans, and elves. Replete with steam tanks, dragons, and a whole lot of DACA. And we're going to see some bananas builds on both sides as the Dragon Princes ride to ruin. Looking like the end times out here. The menace below has risen from the depths and it's Throg and Siggy fighting back to back. Two best friends that anybody could have. Sigvald leads the Chaos Warrior Infantry. Throg commands the Beasts of Wintertooth and the Cavalry. And the Skaven? Well, they're just doing Skaven things. It's looking like a World War II flick out here. They've got some serious firepower, warp lightning cannons, death glow bombardiers, and a whole lot of artillery. But here's the thing. The Empire's pretty damn good at shooting you too. They've got a dwarf phalanx in their front ranks. That's one great way to stem the chaos tide. They've got dragons overhead to cause that terror, to unleash some strawberry milkshake breath and send you into oblivion. They've got Ungrim ready to slay monsters, a steam tank in the back, and they also have quite a lot of DACA. So, Hellstorm Rocket Batteries are going to open up fire, and for some reason, I don't know why, every time I cast my subs, or my viewers, when they're playing sub commanders, they love suiciding their Marauder Horse Masters and their Marauder Cav. I think it is a latent hatred of Sertha Act. That's the only thing I can think of at this point, but it happens every damn time I do it. Look at these poor guys. Just Vanguard deployed right in the fire arc of all these handguns and the arcing artillery. And take a look at that shot. The legions are marching forth under a salvo of rocket fire, Fimir warriors, Chaos warriors, Sigvald, Throg. You know, this is going to be an epic game. Warp Lightning Cans are going to open up on the Illyrian Reaver Archers and the Gisales. Natty Pupo Sharpshooters getting some good shots in too. Already bleeding models left, right, and center. And the Imperial Gunpowder will force Chaos into high gear. When they finally get into melee, it will be no mere warrior phalanx, but a shield wall of dwarf iron breakers. Their armor is thick and their shields broad. Not to mention Dragon Prince is patrolling the flanks, gobbling up any warhounds to try to squeegee their way through. Pretty fearsome army, I must say. They are packing some heat. But a pack of doggos managed to slip past, and they're going wild on the Hellstorm Rocket Battery crew. They're going to finish them off. That's a big play. Hellstorms can do some serious work in a 3v3 scenario like this one. So getting them off the field early, pretty big. And they're actually going to route before they lose the majority of their models too. So we might see them again. Very nicely played there. Ooh, might have gotten sandwiched. Don't know how many will escape. There's a final transmutation. Overcast going down on Throg. I'd argue that's probably not the best target for that spell right now. He has regen. If you don't have a way to burst him down directly after you cast it, probably just cast it on something else, like the Fimir. But then again, that has magic resist. So Bale Fiend's probably not the right call either. Maybe just wait until a blob forms in this infantry engagement. and really help your Ironbreakers tank out for quite a bit longer than they would normally be able to. And they're going to be tanky anyway. I mean, there are no Chosen on the field. There's nothing for the infantry on the Chaos side that will chunk through Ironbreakers easily. They do have a lot of armor piercing though, and they do have Forsaken on the flanks. Penumbral Pendulum going down will carve a path to the handguns. Pretty juicy cast from Norska, picking off the back line. Star Dragon beginning to feel the Wrath of Warp Lightning, but Deathblow Mortars have opened up, and in true Skaven fashion, what could be more thematic than some good old-fashioned not-so-friendly fire? Must have heard Archeon thinks the Great Horn Rat's a joke, Get a little bit of payback for their deity, and that volley wasn't even near enemy infantry. Had to be intentional, and it demolished those Chaos Warriors. Puts them in their place with some fireworks. And speaking of fireworks, the Hammer of the Witches wants to get in on the friendly fire action. Blow a few Dawi in half, but hey, kill me some Chaos Warriors, so it's all gravy, right? No problem whatsoever. Giselle's continuing to crisscross their fire, destroy the silver bullets in the back, and the Chaos Warriors with great weapons are charging home with their very high charge bonus for infantry. Char Dragon is getting picked apart by the artillery and the Giselle fire. Ironbreakers unleashing their blasting charges into the front ranks, pushing back the initial wave of Chaos Warriors, but yet another wave are coming in. Crossbow is getting some good shots into Throg and the Ironbreakers layering their defense, but one way to make sure they retreat and push them backwards is to unleash the Death Globe Avalanche Mortars. If I was playing Order here, I'd be focusing them down immediately with the Hammer of the Witches. You cannot afford to let them fire into your stuff. They will explode so much of your infantry if they're given time to shoot. 
Sigvald is beginning to feel the effects of all that armor-piercing handgun fire that's arcing his way, and he's now dueling Ungram Ironfist, which is probably not where he wants to be, and Magma, spewing forth from the mouth of a moon dragon of Lilith. Oh, shit. And it's looking like the Cell Games. Final flash from Vegeta. Half of those Forsaken just completely exploded by that cast. And the Chaos Warriors pushing through the Miners and the Iron Breakers are trying their best to do so. Breaking this Dwarf Phalanx will not be easy, but it will be a much more simple task if those Armor Sundering Mist Stalkers can charge it from behind, and they're gonna shut down one of the Great Cannons. Pretty big play. Sigvald is getting low. Chaos Warriors need to pull him away from Ungram Iron Fist, who's showing him no mercy, no respite. Handgun Fire doing a good job of stopping the Armor Sundering Mist Stalkers for now, and a Wither. Big AoE spell gonna debuff the armor of all the units in the middle. Sigvald needs to run. He is so low, but the Star Dragon! Oh my god! That is some Daka if I've ever seen it. Rattling Gun, Alley Oop to the Warp Lightning Cannon. Six of them firing in and destroying that poor single entity as Golden Hounds bounces through the center of the Skaven battle line. Sigvald is still alive and he has retreated. That Auric Armor should give him a bunch of regen. That is one thing Chaos has going for them. Their lords all have regen except for Skrulk. So even if they get beat up, if they run away and somehow manage to survive, they might end up being okay. Skaven weapon teams are running into melee. I don't recommend that. That's not really where they want to be. War Blinding Cans continue to reap a terrible toll across the battlefield, and the Moon Dragon got a little bit too close for comfort against those Skaven weapon teams in the back lines, and she's down to half HP, and she does not have life support from a mage. No regrowth, no earth blends will be going her way. Look at all that artillery and magic exploding at once. And the silver bullets are donezo. Another really good cast from that penumbral pendulum. Femir Balefiend is definitely making a huge impact. His cousins though, not having such a good time. They've been ripped apart by all that handgun fire, but with the Werekin, they have bounced back and forth, killing a lot of artillery. So they've still been pretty good. And the avalanche mortars are still the biggest threat the forces of order face. Well, those and the Warp Lightning Cannons who have done an incredible job of sniping out the single entities. And in fact, they just routed the Moon Dragon. So yeah, they've been amazing. The Skaven Artillery has been on Fleekazoid this entire battle. Really just destroyed a bunch of the forces of order's army. Their most important, their highest value targets. Rattling guns firing in, but they're incredibly exposed out here. And they're going to get charged by the Fireborn and Dragon Princes who have finally decided to make their move. Silverhelm's also roaring in from the flank, and I like that play from the High Elves a lot. I think a lot of newer players will commit their cavalry way too early in these kind of engagements, and in 3v3s, it's very easy for them to just completely focus you down right at the start. Hold on, use them in reserve, wait until the battle lines break down, and then the cavalry can really be brought forth and do a lot of damage to the opposition. So I think that's the right play, but still, he hasn't shut down the artillery, and that's the problem. He's going for the rattling guns instead of going for the really powerful stuff that will make his Dragon Princess sad. Halberdiers continuing to get exploded by the Deathglow Bombardiers. The Avalanche Mortars are just shrecking stuff at this point. Well over 200 kills, and just going from target to target as Pit of Shades drops down on the Dawi left flank. Didn't seem to clip that many of their units, though. Not going to do a massive amount of damage. Silver Helms are in there trying to do whatever they can to push back the tides of chaos. And it looks like the infantry fight is going the way of the forces of order. But the artillery fight, yeah, it's going the way of chaos for sure. And if order doesn't do something about those soon, they're not going to have an army left. The warp lightning cannons got plenty of ammunition to continue rending apart the infantry that remains. But that is the advantage order has right now. They have a lot more infantry. A lot more infantry. The Chaos Warriors did not do particularly well in that fight. The Iron Breaker Phalanx has held strong their blasting charges, really brought those numbers down, made it a much more manageable fight for the Forces of Order. And we've got a bolt coming out from the Moon Dragon and the Princess riding atop it, trying to take out Sigvald, who's got to be close to that regen cap at this point. He's been regening the entire battle. Werekin taking a full volley of handgun fire. Even with the Ruinous Flesh, he will not enjoy that. And he's trying to escape and get some of that regen. Giselles and Avalanche Mortars are retreating. Doing what they can to escape. And Marauder Horsemen and Marauder Horse Masters charging in and giving them a little bit of a screen. But they won't be long for this world. And a bit more friendly fire from Warp Lightning Cannons are going to send them 
running for the hills too. But look at that blue tide, that Dawi tide pushing forth. Illyrian Reaver archers working in tandem, tying down a lot of range units in the back, making sure that that inexorable tide of Dawi, that shield wall continues pushing forward and they need to get into the artillery. That is their win condition here. The Phalanx is held strong, but now they've got to get aggressive and that's not where the Dawi are really great. It's not really where they shine. Not particularly fast, not particularly mobile, but they can throw Blasting Charges at Sigvald from close range, and he is going to try to escape and get back to the safety of his own forces. Deathblow Bombardiers, the Mortars coming in! Raining purple death from the skies! The purple haze, it's too much. The Reaver Archers are donezo, but there's no infantry left for the Forces of Chaos. What are they supposed to do? Just throw scraps at them, I guess. There's no other real card to play. The Avalanche Mortars and the rest of the artillery that isn't shut down can still fire in and do a tremendous amount of damage, but there's nothing in the middle, really. There's a few Fimir Warriors and artillery crews that are out of ammo, and that's pretty much all you can use as your meat shields at this point. But it's amazing what those Deathglow Mortars have done this battle. They still have Sigvald alive. I think Skrulk is running. Oh, he's still alive. More summons. That's big. That's what Chaos needs. They need more summons. They need more bodies on the field. To just push back the horde of Dawi that are trying to get into the artillery. But Chaos is pretty much off the field. There's not a whole lot left. Ungrim is on the hunt. Chasing after Skrulk, who's popped his Rod of Corruption. And the Dragon Prince is coming in from the flank. We'll bowl over the meat shields. Get rid of these clan rats pretty quick. Skrulk is about to shatter for sure. He's one hit from death. More blinding cans are back online and killing a bunch of dragon princes though. War blinding cans have been incredible too. The Werekin, the Skin Wolves, and the rest of the Beasts of Wintertooth, even Throg on life support. But they're going in. Throg and Siggy fighting back to back. Can they hold? Bounce bar a little bit in favor of the forces of order. If they could get rid of that princess though, get rid of this moon dragon, that would be a huge win and a big swing on the balance bar. Get rid of one of their only remaining sources of terror besides the steam tank. Ungrim and Sigvald going at it. Sliver slash and the axe of Dargo. That is a big mohawk and a big donger. And it looks like Sigvald is actually winning. Ungrim choosing to run away, very dishonorable. Stand and fight, coward. This is, I mean, it's a win-win either way. Either you die and gain a glorious death, or you win and kill off the most important Chaos Legendary Lord on the field right now. Moon Dragon Breath will lower Sigvald's HP even more. Ungrim should have stayed and fought, man. That's his lore. You gotta roleplay, bro. Chaos Warriors fighting it out with a bunch of Iron Breakers. I don't see them having the DPS to cut through all the, yeah, they just broke immediately. Chaos is done with this fight, man. They're they're over it. They've had enough. And it's up to the Skaven at this point. Do the Skaven have what it takes to carry this game? It's still doable. There's not a lot on either side. Some kind of spell, some kind of vortex on the Ironbreaker blob would be huge. Giselles are in melee, but they're out of ammunition. So they've got to use their shields just to bash some miners over the head. Do some 360 no-scopes at close range. But yeah, they can't. They can't hold on that side either. The Moon Dragon's still alive, but that volley might be enough to send her off the field. Nani Bubo's fired in. She is running. Crossbows are shooting. Warp Lightnings are still firing. They've been firing this entire battle. I don't know. I think the High Elves had enough cavalry advantage to push in and get rid of some of those about halfway through this battle, but they weren't able to do it. Nani Bubo still has a ton of ammo. Fire into the crossbows. Probably the right call at this point. I mean, I'd like to see them kill a steam tank, but I'm not sure they're going to be able to get in range, so might as well kill a thing that's the biggest threat to you. And they're getting some real nice Zergriz Red Tiger no scopes. Those are a lot of heads flying. A lot of dead in that crossbow unit. Oh, that's brutal. That is so brutal. They're called sharpshooters for a reason. Warp Lightning Cannon finally looks to be getting shut down by Balthazar Gelt of all people on his winged Pegasus. Bit redundant. I don't care. It sounds cool. And he's going to kill off the rest of this artillery crew. And I don't think the Skaven... Oh, well, that's one way to kill him. There might be one way to stop him. You get point blank volleys from the other cannon crew. Quicksilver is displeased with that, I'm sure. And this wave of Gromro. The Ironbreaker squads have been fighting on the front ranks this entire battle. 
rallying to their king, rallying to Ungram Iron Fist, the king of Karakadrin, the Slayer God, and together they will ride his lofty mohawk to victory. And they're gonna carry it. Dawi put in so much work and finally killed off the Warp Lightning Cannons and carried the game. Flick Montana with the Grom Royal Wave, Spooks on the Imperial Gunpowder, the Senate, I am the Senate, with the High Elves, Rat Smacker with Chaos, and he got smacked by the rats. Maybe he should have picked a different name so he didn't get friendly fired by the Avalanche Mortars. Professor Holskopf on Norska, and Danger Ice on the Skaven. Really fun sub-commander's battle. Got pretty close at the end, but the Imperial Gunpowder in combination with the dragons up top, which to be fair, the dragons actually didn't do a massive amount. The cavalry got some good charges in, did some good killing, but made a few mistakes there. I think he would have been better served going for the artillery for sure. Getting rid of those warp lightning cans who fired the majority of that battle. Skaven, look at those avalanche mortars. The death globe mortars, the warp lightning cannons, all of them shoved, all of them killing a tremendous amount of the order forces. Wow. That's some serious killing power for sure. And then Professor Holzkopf. His cavalry tried to do some stuff. The Werekin, Fimir. Got some good kills on the Werekin and on the Miststalkers and Throg himself. Spooks. Balthazar Gelt, 50 kills. Steam Tank, 56 kills. And then for Chaos and Sigvald. Well, the Chaos Warriors did not do as well as I would like to see them do. And I think that was probably the biggest issue with their build. Maybe a few less Forsaken who really didn't do anything and got Miss Micro a bit. Perhaps a couple Chosen. Great weapons would have been enough to cut through the Gromril wave and finish them off for good. And if you get through the Iron Breakers, you get into the artillery, you can win the game. You can ride that to victory for sure. But super enjoyable. Thank you guys for sending in that Sub Commander's Battle. Had a great time casting, had a great time watching it. And there will be plenty more content on the way soon. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to give it a rating. And I'll see you all in the next video. Indie Pride, signing out for now. Have a good one, guys.